Okay, this will be the second lecture as regards the arterial blood gas. The title is Metabolic Acidosis, Basic Concepts. As we mentioned before in the past session, uh, how can you interpret the arterial blood gas as regards the acid-base balance? We have a step zero. We have to make sure that the ABG is normal. Step two, which is step one here, acidemia versus alkalemia. Step two, respiratory versus metabolic abnormality. Step three, if it is respiratory, we have to determine if it is acute or chronic, and we are going to mention this step later. Step four, if it is metabolic, is it compensated or not? If metabolic acidosis, is it high or normal anion gap? And if it is high anion gap metabolic acidosis, what is the gap-gap ratio? First step we mentioned before is making the make sure that the EBG is is uh, uh, correct using the equation hydrogen ions equals to 24 multiplied by CO2 over by carb and this is the collection table with the hydrogen ions concentration versus the pH. So acid base disorders either acidosis or alkalosis and we mentioned before that acidosis it means increase in the hydrogen ions concentration in the blood okay alkalosis it means decrease in the hydrogen ions concentration in the blood okay acidosis could be respiratory causes for example increase in the co2 as a result of respiratory center depression uh, copd and so on or metabolic causes due to extra acid come to the circulation Alkalosis also, also could be a respiratory cause or metabolic cause. What is the mechanism of metabolic acidosis? As we mentioned before, there is increase in the hydrogen ions concentration in the blood. Okay. To develop metabolic acidosis or to determine the causes of metabolic acidosis, okay, we have either factors that increase the hydrogen ions directly, for example, extra acid in the blood extra acid come to the blood okay how come extra acid come to the blood okay through lactic acid for example in, in shock patient uh, keto acids in diabetic ketoacidosis uremic uremia methyl alcohol all these are extra acids come to the circulation salicylate toxicity they are extra acid come to the circulation another point which could be Bicarb plus. Okay, how can we lose bicarb? For example, in diarrhea. So, to have a metabolic acidosis, we have either extra acid come to the circulation, either diabetic ketoacidosis, lactic acid, uremic, methyl alcohol, ethyl, or toxins, or bicarb loss. These are the two main causes of metabolic acidosis or mechanisms of metabolic acidosis. How can calculate compensation of metabolic acidosis? As we mentioned before, in patient with in any blood gas, we have first to look to the pH, then to look to the CO2, then to the bicarb. Okay, if the pH is low, it means we have acidosis. If the CO2 is low so it cannot explain the acidosis so we have to look to the bicarb when the bicarb is low it is a metabolic acidosis as you mentioned before this is the primary abnormalities okay let's say it again let's say it again if we have bh is low second step look to CO2. If the CO2 is high, it means respiratory acidosis because it will explain the pH. If the CO2 is low, it cannot explain the pH. So we are going to look through the bicarb. When the bicarb is low, it is a metabolic acidosis. The next step is to calculate the compensation this is step two so 
we have a primary abnormality which is we discovered it through the IBG pH followed by CO2 followed by carbon then a secondary abnormalities could be present how can we know the secondary abnormalities by calculating the compensation how can we calculate the compensation in metabolic acidosis the expected carbon dioxide will equal to 1.5 multiplied by by carb plus 8 plus or minus 2 okay so this is the equation by which we can calculate the compensation okay so let's return to our slides so how to calculate compensation the, cal the expected co2 equal to 1.5 multiplied by by carb plus 8 plus or minus 2 okay how can we interpret the compensation if the expected co2 equal to that of the abg so this patient has no secondary abnormalities he is compensated but if the expected CO2 we calculated higher than the expected CO2 in the ABG, it means that this patient has something causes metabolic acidosis and another cause of respiratory acidosis because this ABG is higher than the expected. This CO2 is higher than expected. What happened? If the CO2 is lower than the expected, it means mixed metabolic acidosis which is the primary and respiratory alkalosis that's say we have a cause that lead to a metabolic acidosis and we have another pathology in our patient which will lead to respiratory alkalosis let's see this patient 20 years old diabetic patient admitted to the icu he has dyspnea and cosmol breathing his ABG is pH 7.28, CO2 11, VO2 90, bicarb 5, and CO saturation 98%. So, first step is okay, correct the ABG. Step 0 is this ABG is correct or not? Okay, 24 multiplied by CO2 over the bicarb. Okay, equals to hydrogen ions. And then we can detect the BH from the hydrogen ion. And this EBG is correct. So the second step to interpret the EBG, what's happening? This pH is low. So we have acidosis. The CO2 is low. Does this CO2 explain the acidosis? No. Let's look to the bicarb. The bicarb is low. So the primary is metabolic acidosis. Okay, what is the next step to calculate compensation? How can we calculate the compensation? By the equation 1.5, the expected CO2, 1.5 multiplied by, by carb plus 8, plus or minus 2. So 1.5 multiplied by, what is the by carb level? It's 5. Okay, plus 8 which will be 1.5 multiplied by 5 plus 8 equal to 15.5 so this is the expected co2 so the co2 here is 15.5 but what is the actual co2 in the abg it's 11 so the co2 here is lower than the expected co2 that's to say we have a secondary respiratory alkalosis so this patient this diabetic patient has primary metabolic acidosis which could be caused by his DKA for example and he has a second pathology a secondary respiratory alkalosis in this patient we have to search what is the cause of this respiratory alkalosis this patient might have pain might have fever Okay, might have sepsis, infection, pneumonia, for example. Okay, so we have to search to another cause 
that leads to the secondary pathology. Okay, this is the benefit from the interpretation of the EBG. What is the benefit of this interpretation? The benefit clinically is to detect the secondary pathology. Okay, let's see this patient, which will explain to us more about the disease. 56 years old female patient with chronic renal failure and diabetes. She is heavy smoker, shisha and cigarette smoking. She developed severe dyspnea and tachypnea. She was admitted to the ICU confused with respiratory rate 37. Her husband reported that she, she was anuric in the last two days. Her baseline creatinine was 2.3, but the result of the creatinine in our hospital was 7.6, which is very high, and the urea is 230. This is her arterial blood gas, which is 7.01, CO2 is 4.6 kilopascal, which is, B, which is equal to 34 millimeter mercury, and bicarb is 8 millimole. So, what is the first step? So, this is the pH 7.0, CO2 40C, and bicarb 8. Okay, what's step zero? step zero? Correct the IBG. This is the first step. What's the second? Detect the pathology. Detect primary pathology. What is the primary pathology here? The BH is low. It means metabolic. It means acidosis. Second step, look to the CO2. Is the CO2 lower than 40? It cannot explain the BH. So it's not the, the first pathology. Look to the bicarb. The bicarb is low. This patient has primary metabolic acidosis. What is the third step? To make a compensation. The expected CO2 equal to 1.5 multiplied by bicarb plus 8 plus or minus 2 okay so 1.5 multiplied by bicarb 8 plus 8 what is the result the result will be 20. Oh, so the expected CO2 is 20. Oh, what's happening here? What's the expected CO2 here? It, it's 20. And the actual CO2 in the EBG is 34, which is so high. It's 10 millimeter mercury higher than the expected. Okay, so this patient has primary metabolic acidosis mixed with respiratory acidosis. Okay, this patient has two pathologies, primary metabolic acidosis and respiratory acidosis. What is the cause of the primary metabolic acidosis in such a patient? It could be his renal failure. He developed, she developed acute kidney injury through the rising creatinine and the urea. Okay, and what is the cause of her secondary abnormalities, which is the respiratory acidosis? It could be this patient is heavy smoker and it could be COBD and the decompensated. Okay. Let's think, what is the pathology that can kill the patient first? Is it the metabolic acidosis that will kill this patient first? Or the respiratory acidosis that which will kill the patient first? Actually, the respiratory acidosis will be the first cause that will kill the patient. That's to say, this patient may die from the second pathology, not from the primary abnormalities. Okay, again, this patient has two abnormalities. We detect the primary abnormalities through simply calculation of the IBG. 7.0348, so the primary abnormality is the metabolic acidosis and the cause is acute kidney injury. Okay, but when we make the compensation, we found that this patient has a secondary abnormality, which is the respiratory acidosis. And actually, the respiratory acidosis in this patient will kill the patient first before the metabolic acidosis okay the patient will hypoventilate and the patient will be will die from the respiratory acidosis because she, before, before she will die, before dying from the from the metabolic acidosis okay so what is my first step in managing this patient if you think the first step in managing such a patient 
who is confused as mentioned in the scenario and has a respiratory acidosis as secondary pathology is ventilation okay okay so the first step it's not giving by carb and it's not dialysis the first step is ventilation because this patient might die now from respiratory acidosis not from metabolic acidosis and this is and this scenario explain how important to know the interpretation of the arterial blood gas let's see another examples for example this 45 years uh, patient found drowsy vomiting on shirt she's hypotensive and tachycardic her ebg is 7.22 7.22 CO2 is 29 and bicarb is 11. First step, correct EBG. Second step, what is the primary? What is the primary? pH is low, it means acidosis. CO2 is 29, it cannot explain. Look to the bicarb, 11, so it's a metabolic acidosis. Okay, but this patient has a metabolic acidosis. Okay, let's see if it compensated or not. Expected CO2 equal to 1.5 multiplied by bicarb plus 8. 1.5 multiplied by 11 plus 8. What is the result? Twenty-four. Point five. Okay, so the expected CO two is twenty four point five, and what is expected the CO two here is twenty nine. So this CO two is lower than expected. So this patient has a secondary respiratory alkalosis. That is to say, this patient might have a cause that causes metabolic acidosis, which may could be the hypotension and the shock it could be lactic acidosis from the shock okay and had another cause that lead to respiratory alkalosis which could be pain fever or sepsis for example infection this patient might aspirate and develop pneumonia and the pneumonia will lead to respiratory alkalosis so this is the secondary causes if i think to to, to treat only the primary abnormalities which is the metabolic acidosis I might miss a secondary abnormality, which could indicate the presence of another pathology, for example, pneumonia. Okay, so I can miss another abnormality. This is how important to, to do the conversation of the arterial blood gas. These two examples, you can start to manage these two examples, and then we are going to discuss them. Thank you for listening.